Hello guys, this is Freedu Reborn. Today I'm going to do an unboxing of the Razer Landsat wireless gaming mouse. Razer has claimed that this wireless gaming mouse is gaming grade professional wireless technology with the adaptive frequency technology which ensures 100% transmission stability. And then this advanced technology constantly scans frequency channels in milliseconds interval for any form of interference, such as Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, microwave, that's around 2.4 gigahertz transmission, all right? And it seemingly switches frequencies to allow a perfect lag-free, low latency data transmission from your gaming mouse to your computer and your gaming session. All right, and the famous chroma that's the most beautiful thing about Razer is their LED light show. All right, everybody wants to know what sorts of sensors it's using inside. All right, at the back of the box, it says the wireless gaming mouse uses the most precise laser sensor, and also here it's really high dpi which most of the people won't even use that's too crazy unless you have like a a 10k monitor all right 8k or 10k monitor other than that it's probably just the tolerance of it you know and also it can move 210 inches per second it tracks that as well as 50g acceleration now wireless gaming frequencies and also finally this is something new and also I would say this is the answer Razer answer to Logitech which is the onboard profile it gets the both cloud and onboard memory to store your gaming profiles on the go as usual you can see that the packaging is the typical 2016 2017 compact packaging unlike the Razer Mamba Chroma that's huge. And then of course it's got sorts of RGB chroma lighting. That's the one of the best part from Razer, light show. If you want to customize your gaming desktop, laptop, whatever, your Razer Blade, okay? Now that's the unboxing. So I usually do unbox really careful. So if I am too slow, please bear with me, all right? So once you open the box, it reminds me of what? Apple product. The first is the instruction book and also the reading materials, literatures, CEO Mingling Tang, and then congratulations, you have been invited to be among the first to get early access to all new Razer Synapse Pro Beta. Your Razer Landsat, Razer Landsat Tournament Edition, edition is capable of storing up to four profiles from Razer Synapse Pro, which you can use on systems that do not have it installed. Pressing the profile button will cycle from the current profile to profile one to four, and the profile indicator will change its color shown which profile it's presently selected. So you got white RGB cyan, okay? Four profiles. Flip it at the back, it's how you download it, okay? The literature, here's the show. Okay, got a flap, and here's the, sh here's the exciting part. Wow, okay, it's a silver metallic color finish with a plastic at the bottom. This packaging reminds me of Logitech G900 and there are nine programmable buttons on this Razer Lens and Wireless, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And finally, at the bottom, there's a profile button here. Everybody can see it. Okay. 
And unfortunately, um, a lot of non-Logitech gaming mouse, they cannot tilt their scroll wheels. That's uh, probably okay for like first person shooter. But I like to have a tilt wheel because I don't use my gaming mouse just for gaming sessions. I use it for like a lot of office and engineering work. All right. So let me see how it feels like. It's actually this ambidextrous mouse. It's really comfy. I can easily access the thumb button and also using my ring finger and pinky to press the right side of the button. The DPI switch. In terms of clicking, it feels like a little bit mushier, but still crispy, I would say. Yeah, I think it's acceptable, but we'll see after some gaming sessions. Okay, over here it says 500 milliamps battery, so it says you can last for it lasts for like 24 hours. Okay, let's go back to package. So underneath, after you take it off, you have this um, razor. Oh, it's a dongle stand, okay, and then here, that's it, really beautiful, compact, iPhone, Apple style packaging. You get this really small 2.4 gigahertz USB transceiver, and then the cable, where the cable is braided cable as you can see, okay. Now a lot of people were complaining about the previous wireless uh, Mamba Razer Chroma that you required a docking station. For all you guys, the docking station lovers, this might be a disappointment, but to mobile lovers, or if you want your desktop space to be as like less crowded, this is what you love, what you're gonna love, man. It's really small, okay? Now I have the Logitech G900, with me, the transceiver, it's a little bit shorter than the Razer, okay? And you can see here, just slightly, okay? Slightly longer, but other than that, I think it's no big deal. It's small and compact enough. And here's the thing, the dongle, USB dongle here. Now, this is a really beautiful design. Uh, compared to the Logitech, it's just a piece of plastic, there's no rubber, so it slides around. This one has like a, a uh, rubber feet, so it won't slide around. It's, make sure you are situated in very secure fashion, all right? And then finally, you got the cable, okay? All right, now let's turn this guy on. Let's see how it feels like. Seriously, the unboxing is amazing. It's like opening an iPhone or Apple product. I like it, actually. Good job, Razer. So here, it seems like you can store your USB, dong, uh, USB transceiver. Okay, this is a really good design. The Logitech G900 does not have this feature, okay? This is one up from Razer, good job. I have to praise for that one. And then, yeah, the G900 just have an ex extra case to hold it. This one, it's you can hold it here, it's so you, Okay, the profile button. Now let's turn this on and see how it looks like. Okay, typical Razer RGB lighting. I'm gonna turn off some lights so that you can enjoy the beautiful colors. Okay. All right. Now I'm gonna connect this guy 
into the Razer dongle. And I think the Razer dongle requires a proprietary cable to be inserted. So right now for a quick purpose, I'm gonna use my Logitech G900 adapter that's quick and then connect to my cable, micro USB cable, and it works. Now, once it's connected, I am going to my desktop here. So guys, once I've connected the wireless dongle, I'm gonna use the Razer update that says update now, so it takes a while to update the Razer software as well as the mouse firmware. Now, everybody, the app and the mouse firmware has already been updated. And right now we are at the Synapse 2.0, not the latest Synapse Pro, okay? And let's check out the lighting first. As you can see, lighting is typically around here. Then once I click on it, there's called the Spectrum Cycling. And then Breathing. Breathing is like this, okay? Breathes and then it comes back up. You can change to different colors to breathe at, like for example, like a green and red. All right, really beautiful lighting. Now next, let's try reactive. As we know, reactive means when you click on a mouse, it has light, but you can also change the reaction time. Okay. Spectrum cycling, we saw that already. Static, just a solid light, nothing special. It won't change to anything. Pretty much wasting your battery. And finally, wave. So if we have the wave, then that's the most unique feature from offered by Razer. I would say this is like a game changer if you care about it aesthetically, like um, the light shows, if you care about that rather than just aiming. So I would say the lighting is perfectly fine and you can also customize the lighting of this mouse, okay? Overall, I would say this mouse, it's it's comfortable for ambidextrous hand. Okay, all right. And in terms of calibration, you can also calibrate it with uh, different um, service enable calibration. But this only works in wide mode. Logitech one does wireless calibration as well. Power, performance, lighting. Now, I want to revisit lighting here because uh, in the Mamba Razer Chroma, there's a lag when I do the customized uh, logos. So let's try that a little bit. Um, just for example, if I want to add like a reactive on this guy, okay? Reactive, let's say it's red. So it will blink from green to red when I Click any mouse buttons. All right, select this and then apply. Now, here's the thing. It's obviously spectrum cycling and you can see the light is kind of discreet. It's jumping around, not really smooth doing the wave, all right? But when I click on the mouse, either button, it becomes red, it recognizes red. But here's the problem I was think I was talking about. It's not smooth. So in wireless mode, it's just not smooth enough when you do the wave pattern. It's like too too discreet. It's like Christmas light giving me a seizure. Okay. All right. So after this, let's go back to here and do not use the custom lighting. We use the wave. Let's go back to the wave. It's a lot smoother, as you can see. All right, so I think it's about the reaction time, I mean the, the fall 
what's that called? The wave pattern. They when you change color, there's like the different delay or something like that. Okay. Wave. So maybe it's this. You can change different stops. For example, I can change all these keys around here. Okay, like here. All right, I select everything. And then I do the delay. Like instead of fast, I do medium. And let's see it. It's called a width is 100%. The pause, let's see. Okay, let's try it out. Automatic. Okay. It's much discreet. Let me do it fast again. Custom. Okay, fast is like 25. I think 25 milliseconds, like the fastest. That's crazy. Uh, let me do... Um, maybe 20. And apply. It's still like... It's not smooth enough. Okay. Let's try fifth, uh, 10. It's okay, I guess. And width. Let's increase the width of each color sessions by 260. You can still see like a choppy, stuttering color. See that that's similar problem as the Razer Mamba Chroma, but this is a lot lighter. It was uh, 111 gram. Okay, let's check out the drawing of this, the uh, precision. I'm just using a OneNote app, Logitech G900, as you can see from here. Okay, if you're closed up. All right, it tracks. I can do it on the glass, like my monitor, like I can do this. Okay, but not the razor. The razor laser sensor doesn't work anything. See, I, it doesn't work. Okay, not using this. Okay, let me show you. G900, I'm not, I'm not using it. I'm just gonna put it aside. All right, now I'm gonna draw something. Hello. This is video. I think it's okay. If we try to draw circles, I'm obviously not really good at drawing these, but I don't have a complete circle, um, circular machine to track it. But here in my home, I have tons of wireless devices, more than 20, uh, constantly bombarding around this mouse, and I would say it's still traceable. Okay. It's really smooth, no stuttering, very good tracking. And here, it's the G900 Logitech. Let me do the same thing, all right? I'm gonna open a new one. Okay, here, this is the Logitech G900. And I would say tracking is similar. Okay, so I think it's fine. Both of them can definitely trace and track perfectly. So it, I would say delay, let's try one gaming session, Overwatch. I'm gonna use this Razer to play a game. See if it works. Okay. Just do a quick game session using the Razer. Lance head. This. Sombra. I 
would say the aiming, it's very good. Yep, it's good. Okay, this Razor Lance head, I would say I highly praise the accuracy. It's difficult to play a game and review the mouse at the same time. Okay, let me concentrate for gaming sessions. I'll say a little bit heavier than the G900. But I would say overall my pinky, it's a little bit scratching the mat. Gosh. Okay, I gotta concentrate. After several rounds of Overwatch gaming sessions, I would say the accuracy of the lens head wireless is absolutely amazing. I do not feel that I am using a wireless mouse. It feels like wired mouse. And the accuracy and aiming, it, it just feels natural. Sensors, even though it's a laser sensors, right? It can track 50 Gs. And I can do like real quick and really responsive. The Razer Mumble Chroma will just die on me. Uh, well, wireless it will track, but then if I have interference, like a phone right next to the dong, uh, the the docking station, the Mumble Razer Chroma, after a while it, it got interfered. Also, the mouse itself, the tracking, the X, Y, and Z axis tracking has issue that I couldn't even move horizontally. This guy has perfect so far. Um, I'm, I'm just saying the out-of-the-box experience, the Mumba Razer Chroma had tracking issues already inherited. And this lens head does not have that issue at all. Okay, does not. So I would say, so far, is this the answer to Logitech? Yes, accuracy, yes, definitely. Is this the answer to Logitech uh, using the 3366 optical sensors, using the lasers? I would say, very close, okay? I don't have the equipment to test it, but so far I would say highly competitive. Now, in terms of the lighting, this is the Christmas tree lighting. Now the G900, I put it side by side each other. As you can see, obviously the Razer lens head definitely is the winner. Um, you get the program, cust fully customizable program, the lighting LED on the scroll wheel, seven section on the left side, as well as the right side, and then the logo. Seven plus seven, 14, 16, 
14, 15, and 16. Total 16 programmable lighting zones, okay? This compared to Logitech's only one logo being an RGB, and it doesn't do any wave patterns, all right? This is, Razer's definitely the, the beautiful thing here, look. So the wave is really, really smooth, and I, I would give like, this is really eye candy. But of course, when you are doing gaming, you are probably not looking at it. But I'm saying that Razer can customize a lot of stuff. First of all, the different color profiles, such as reaction, it's actually pretty useful. When I'm clicking button, this thing will, will turn colors, will react. Okay, you can program it to be red color when you click on it, okay? And then like this becomes red and then um, if I want to do wave if I want to do static or breathing or even no colors and also fully customizable zones and I can assign to different regions okay Logitech is very limited only three color settings breathe static cycle of course you have off nothing else okay so color wise this guy lens head weight wise let's talk about the weight this is a 111 gram for the lens head logitech g900 it's 107 gram there's four grams difference do you feel it yes i do this is obviously lighter for my hand to move like this using my palm not using the arm this one is really heavier, but it's not much, but it's, you get used to it. But since I'm used to the G900 for a while, um, I would say I noticed the difference, okay? But again, this is personal preference. It depends on the uh, game you play. Uh, if you do a lot of first-person shooter, you might want to do this, the G900. But it depends, subjective-wise. But in terms of weight, I would say G900 is a lot lighter. Ergonomics. Ergonomics, I would say both of them are ambidextrous, first of all. Second of all, it's it's really subjective. Some people, a lot of people I heard they like the G900. Me personally, not my favorite mouse. I figured that the G502, 502 that I have is actually better, uh, feels better on me, okay? Um, the reason it's somehow the back of the mouse it's narrower it fits my palm better the G900 it's really tall and wide here that I have cobble I developed like a short cobble tunnel after long gaming sessions and I have to train my arm and I have to rest a lot in order to build up good muscles here okay so to me the G900 needs need some time to get used to my first impression wasn't that good okay in terms of ergonomics uh, and also the you notice that if I do the claw grip I have a lot of space in here a lot of gap between the button and my finger all right so it's put more stress that's why I had like a develop like a pain on my arm now raise the lens head it's obviously taller over here so the gap is lower okay between my finger and the button this mouse button secondly here i talked about the g509 uh, 502 it's narrower this is pretty much similar okay so it fits my palm perfectly it really good but of course my ring finger and the uh, pinky might sometimes scratching the, the mat but it depends on how i grab it usually overall i would say it's good and as you can see here, both mouse, the G900 is slightly, slightly longer than the lens head. Not by much. But I think the deal breaker is the bottom width. So that's, uh, again, it's a subjective, subjective uh, feeling that I would say this lens head fits my hand. Some people will think this is better. Some people might think the G900 will be better. Okay, personally, I choose lens head. 
battery. Okay, this is really good comparison. G900 has exceptional battery, 32 hours if you turn off all the lights. But with my current settings using cycle, with luminance lower than around like uh, 40%, go to 40% luminance, brightness, that's called. You get 31 hours. Lens had 24 hours. Obviously, Logitech wins over there. But again, how often do you really charge? If you do a lot of gaming sessions, I think it's enough, you know? Just after each gaming session, uh, one, one, one day or two, just uh, charge it, you know? And also, um, I would say for Logitech, I usually like play like three, three days and then I charge it. But sometimes I just, every time when I'm done with gaming, I turn it off. Here as well, I turn it off. Save battery life, also save the life of the sensors, okay? So that's how you do it. So battery life, of course Logitech because it's less lighting, less Christmas light, less customizations. This guy uses more, okay? Logitech wins in terms of battery life due to the limited lightings. Okay, next it's the programmable buttons. Now the lens head here has only nine buttons because there's no tilt buttons, the two tilts, left and right. G900 has 11 due to the tilting scroll wheel. Now speaking of the scroll wheel, I really like the Logitech Hyper Scroll. It's like unlimited scroll, so it works for websites, paper, um, PDF files, as well as documents, web pages. That's absolutely amazing. It's a productive workhorse. Okay, G900 wins. It's really accurate. Good feeling, I would say. For games, this is sufficient. So it comes down to preference. You like to use the scroll wheel of a hyper scroll, or you want regular no tilting function it's up to you but I really like the lighting on the scroll wheel um, personal preference I would say Logitech it's better more high-tech more features okay next it's the button feelings this is about the mouse button now let's listen to the noise generated from the lens head wireless listen Okay, it's very silent, it's mushier, and for the side button, it's go inward. So I need to do like this in order to touch it. If I do, if I want to click on the side button, I have a tendency to have my index finger lift up. So if I want to do gaming and then I want to do like um, uh, putting action, for example, Overwatch, I want to shoot and then using action button, the melee button on the thumb. I have to program it to the the one in the front. If I go to reach the one in the back, it's not as convenient. Okay. Now, Logitech G900. Notice the difference. The G900 sticks out, outward, oval shape. The Razer, it's inward. The good side of the G900 is actually I have very easy access to both buttons, okay? Both buttons. So I would say, and also you can take out the buttons cover and replace with a to completely unaccessible button here. I mean a cover here, so they can block it, okay? And I think uh, in terms of button customization, Logitech is the true winner, okay? All right, and also programmable buttons is more, two more, okay? The button is crispier, it's noisier compared to Razer. Lens head. 
okay? So I personally like the Logitech crispier sound, better feedback that I'm pressing a button as well as the feeling of it. And profile and onboard memory. There's five on the Logitech, four on the Razer lens head. Currently, if I use Synapse 2.0, I don't have the Pro installed because it's a beta version. Logitech wins. Main reason is it automatically scans all the games and I do a little bit of work. I don't need to find the EXE like Synapse. Synapse, you know, it's really annoying when you find the EXE, the game EXE, and then you have to edit and then you have to all, do all these customizations. <clears throat> and also, um, it's just not as easy to use, not as intuitive. Hopefully the pro version, when it really launches, it, it will give me a better impression. But I really like the cloud, cloud profile. So if I have a desktop computer, and then I do the same gaming sessions on my laptop or on other extension, cloud is actually a good way to store your gaming profiles, a better way to do it, you know? Um, Plus, it has on board, so you don't need to install the software, the Synapse software. You can store your profile within the onboard memory, there's four, while the G900 has five. One more profile. However, I really like the idea of cloud, so that I do less management work. I, I For Logitech, if I have to migrate my games from one computer to another, I have to export it, you know? That one, it's annoying. So it depends on preference, personal preference. If you have like multiple gaming system, a laptop and a desktop gaming, maybe you have to consider a Synapse solution with a cloud so that you don't need to migrate around. But if you only have one gaming computer, Logitech is enough. Plus the overall workaround software customization is easier. Okay, more simple, okay? Now, Software-wise, I would say Synapse is still buggy, all right? At this moment, Synapse 2.0 is buggy. Pro might have improvement, but we'll see. I'm looking forward for it, okay? Finally, customer service. Now, this is, I think, is very important. As a gaming mouse, you do it like you stressed it, basically. Now, let's talk about Razer. I obviously it's brand new mouse, brand new bot from local store, and there I have no problem like doing all these like um, I had a problem uh, with my previous generation, which is the Razer Mamba Chroma. The laser just couldn't track anymore, so I had to send back the mouse to Razer, and then they sent me a completely brand new sealed mouse, Razer Mamba Chroma wireless. Um, the whole work, the, the whole turnaround, it's like a, more than a week, alright? So I have more than a week without mouse, so this is my backup, G900. Okay, G900, guess what? I encountered issues. The button just didn't respond on the, uh, it got stuck for the DPI button. I have to call Logitech, and guess what? They told me, they troubleshooted together with together with me and they sent me a brand new sealed G900 without me sending the defected unit so the price of one I get one and a half or two okay depends on how you define the defectiveness so to me I have two G900 now I'm not suggesting anybody to exploit it I'm just telling you, Logitech has the best customer service. If I have to rate the Razer customer service together against the Logitech, I would say if Razer is 95% customer satisfaction, Logitech is 110% customer satisfaction. No doubt, all right? So, this concludes my review and SmackDown as well as unboxing of the Razer Lens Head Wireless. So, thank you for watching my video. Hopefully you like it. If you like it, thumbs up. 
If you don't like it, thumbs down, and hopefully you can subscribe, and you get to see more of these videos. Thank you.